In this video, we're gonna create an amazing double exposure scene with After Effects. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So I love the double exposure technique. It's really fun to employ, and it's been done several times in the past across YouTube, you probably come across it. But in this video, we wanna talk about creating a successful double exposure scene with your title, or for whatever other information that you need to work with, we're gonna to put together an amazing scene, and this is how you can compile it together, the perfect composition in After Effects. So the first thing, let's talk about the media. This works with photos and video. It's a little bit easier with photos because everything stays nice and still. All right, here we are in After Effects and we have two images in place here. And the first image is our primary image that we're gonna be doing all of our exposure work in. And this is the image that's gonna go within our talent. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna work with our primary layer. You wanna make sure that your subject or object is separated from the background. So what I suggest doing in most situations is just to grab the roto brush here at the top and you need to double click your layer and then bring it up into a separate layer over here. And then you go to your brush window and you increase the diameter of your brush and you can start to just paint along your talent or whatever object you're working with. And you want to make sure you select the entirety of your talent and you can see obviously with the, you know, the outline here, we can see what is selected. And if you need to subtract anything, hold down alt on your keyboard and you can just paint in that area and it will deselect you know certain objects and when it's all said and done i would increase the feather a little bit to pro house about 20. so this is very important when you're working with video you, this little gray bar right here you need to drag this out to the entirety of your video that you want to keep in place and then simply all you do is bring your playhead to the end and it will automatically analyze forward and then you might need to go back and repaint things in and out if you have to do that now if you're working with a photo like me all you need to do is just click on freeze and click on stop unless it does one frame and if you're doing this with a photo go ahead and pre-compose this layer and call it your image click ok and then right click your layer and go to time and click on freeze frame so now you have the freeze frame of your entire layer like this and now our talent is cut out from the background without having to use the pen tool all right and now the next thing we want to do is bring in our background so here it is all right and then i want to grab our background image here and i want to pre-compose it and we'll call it secondary and from here, what I want to do is go to the track mat. If you don't see the track mat, just toggle switch the most until you see it. Set the track mat to alpha mat. And there it is. Our image takes place of our primary image. And then from here, what I like to do is to duplicate our primary image. So go up to edit, duplicate. Turn our layer back on. Grab the pen tool at the top. And this is where I want to start drawing out where I don't necessarily want our secondary exposure taking place. And it's, I'm just going to kind of mask around and, you know, kind of keep it to outline for hair. And this is exactly where I don't necessarily want the double exposure to take place. And here it is. Hit alpha on your keyboard for mask feather and feather it out to about 80 or so. And now we have a little bit of a primary exposure here. And, and you can be very selective with your mask depending on your image. And if we want this even further, depending on your background image, say we have this extra sky here. What if we don't want that, you know, sky in there? We go into our secondary image and we see that our sky is around here. I can say just grab the pen tool here or use the roto brush, whatever you want to use here. And I'm just going to mask around the outline of the mountains here. And my mask is complete. And as you can see, it's very rough. I didn't do any you know, extreme details in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and feather this one out feather out just probably about 40 or so depending on the image and now we don't see the mat on top of our image all right now that we have a double exposure in here we can start stylizing this scene so we go back and say our talent layer and if we want we can say add a color correction tint we can just do a little bit of color correction here maybe black and white just about a little bit to maybe 80 percent um, and then we'll go back into our main comp and that blends kind of nicely with our environment so obviously we want to do some animation here with our talent so what we can do here is grab say the secondary layer, hit PR on a keyboard and hold down Shift S to bring up the scale. We can add a keyframe for position and scale. And we can move forward to the end of our animation, I'll say five seconds. We can scale this upward if you want. And we can position it down. And this will create a little bit of parallax. And then what we'll do here, since we have two talent layers, let's go to Layer New Null Object. And let's grab both of our talent layers and let's parent it to the null object. Do the same thing, bring up the positioning and scale. Add a keyframe for both of those. And then we can maybe scale it backwards by a touch and position it down. And that will create just a little bit of a parallax between our exposure and our foreground layer. 
And of course, if you're on a time crunch or if you're looking for some inspiring ideas with the double exposure effect, go ahead and check our links in the video description. All the previews you are seeing right here are from VideoHive and these are After Effects templates, meaning they are pre-made, ready to go. You can swap out your text, drag in your own images, and you're gonna be able to save a ton of time and be able to render out your project in just a matter of minutes compared to taking hours to even days working on a project like this. And if any of these previews interest you, go ahead and check our links in the video description. So now our double exposure technique is complete and it looks great. Now let's build out the rest of our composition so we can have an overall nice project. And then what we'll do here is we'll grab all of our layers that we used to do our double exposure and we'll pre-compose it and we'll call it double exposure. And we can make maybe move our talent over a little bit and we can type out some text you know we could bring some text in here so perhaps we're doing some of this is double exposure totally fine with however we want to say it we could put it underneath our talent layer and you see we can put the layer underneath our talent which is cool and what could take this effect even further i have a metal image here and just a little texture that we can drop on top of everything and i can change the blend mode to soft light and this will create an overall nice texture on our exposure layer so this is how you set up a nice scene. And now if we want to animate this, we can say grab our talent layer, hit piano keyboard for position, add a keyframe here, and we can you know, have it slightly you know, move over to the you know, right side. And we do the same thing with our title here. We hit piano keyboard for position, and we can just have this one move over from the left side here. So we'll be able to read it as it comes in. So that's one way you can set up a nice little scene here. And if we want, we can use a cool little animation text preset here by going to our folders and use something like evaporate as a preset and then hit U on your keyboard for the keyframes and grab the offset keyframes, right click them, go to keyframe assistance and time reverse keyframes. So now we have our title and with our double exposure. All right, and then when everything's said and done, make sure to turn on motion blur for everything and then you should be good to go. So there's our take on the double exposure effect using After Effects. You have a lot of flexibility with After Effects and it's definitely the way to go about doing things for a motion double exposure. So hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film. We post two post-production tutorials every week right here on this channel. And hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.